What is going on, my online poker players? Now, I hope everyone is having a great day because I have another good session to go over here on Ignition Poker at the 200 No Limit Stakes, where in my opinion, you can make some very easy money. And this is also going to be an update to the best poker site to be using if you're currently located in the United States. But basically, you know, I play around five different poker sites currently, but really the main one I use is Ignition. You know, I posted over 500-ish cash game videos on this channel using them because, like I already mentioned, it's easy to win on here as long as you have a little bit of skill and you can keep your emotions in check. And for some, that's not going to be a problem. And for others, you're going to have to work on those or probably both, if I'm being honest. You know, the mental aspect of being good at poker is really the tough one. It's not just about having skills or talent. And that's just me being honest with you guys. You know, the mental game is a big deal. Anyways, I hope you guys are ready for another session because this was a very good one where yes, you know, we did book a win and we went up a substantial amount of money in under 45 minutes of gameplay. Um, of course, if you guys would like to get started on Ignition, there will also be some bonus links you guys can check out directly below in the description and comments. You can also get on our poker newsletter where we send out one email a week on hand analysis and tips to help you guys make more money at the tables. Don't forget to tap that like and let's get into these hands. And, you know, honestly, guys, you're going to want to stick around all the way through. I'm going to because I did put some bluffs in this one, too, which I want to talk about. But, you know, I like to give you guys my thought process when I'm playing because you got to understand, like, um, if you're not getting the results playing online poker, it doesn't really matter where you're playing. Then you're probably just missing a few pieces to the puzzle. And those are things you need to work on. You know, I say this all the time. We can't control how the cards come out when we're playing online poker or even live poker. But what we can really control is ourselves. Okay, we can control if we're playing good poker, if we're making good laydowns, if we're putting in value bets, if... Um, if we're just doing more things correctly than not correctly, you know, it's important. You're going to have those situations. It's inevitable because I had one a couple of days, or I mean, not a couple of days ago, probably like four or five days ago where, you know, I went all in with um, Pocket Kings pre-flop. If you guys missed that, you can go back and check it out. It's just a few videos back. I had Pocket Kings pre-flop um, in a 500 no limit game, um, went all in for 600 bucks pre-flop. The guy had pocket aces and we lost in those situations are going to happen no matter what. Okay. It's just part of the game. It's just accepting that getting better at handling those things and not getting emotional and getting upset and just tilting off all your money. You know what I'm saying? So, okay. So we are going to, really book a nice win early with this hand and i'm going to tell you guys right now that i did not believe the player to my left one bit which is why i made a call with a very mediocre hand you know obviously it's suited but to call a raise that this guy's going to put in like you know um you better have a plan in place and like i said i just did not believe this bs this bs raise right here one bit so i'm going to make a call here and you could look at this and be like, I should have folded, maybe, but I just didn't believe this dude. So, you know, I um I went for the call. Now player two is gonna fold. I don't really think about it too much here. <sighs> And we got to figure, what's this guy representing? There are a few things he could have, right? Pocket aces, pocket kings, pocket queens, a lot less likely because I have a queen. He could have ace king, um, ace queen less likely because we have a queen. And really, to me, guys, what is this guy representing here? It just, to me, for whatever reason, and I've played so many hands of online poker, I just did not believe this guy at all. Okay, I didn't. So I'm not putting him on aces or kings, right? I'm putting him on, I don't know, like something ridiculous, maybe like a 9-10 like a suited, maybe like a jack-10 something like that. I'm just not a believer of what this guy is selling. So when you put in a bet here, I came over the top on him basically because I'm only making this play because I don't believe him. Let's say worst case scenario, he's got pocket aces or pocket kings. We're not necessarily drawing dead either. We, we still have some possibilities here, obviously. But um, if he did have pocket aces or kings, we would have cracked him with the, with the queen seven. Um, but he turned over pocket nines. Pocket nines, guys. Um, 
why is he raising to 30 bucks anyways with pocket nines? He could have easily just called right there. It just makes absolutely no sense. The sizing doesn't make sense. And when something doesn't really add up, you know, and you're thinking it doesn't add up, then you got to go with your gut. Now, going with your gut and instincts, playing online poker can actually help you out a lot. Um, you know, there are obvi obviously tells to playing online poker. You know, fast betting is one, um, which is usually a sign of bluffing. If somebody's like, you know, fast betting, they don't have anything. When somebody takes a long time and has like the time bank running, that's usually a sign that you're probably beat. You just want to get away from that hand because the person's trying to figure out how much money they can make off of you in a certain situation. But, you know, moral of the story is with that hand I had right there with the queen seven, I just did not believe that guy one freaking bit. Okay. And that's why I made the play. And uh, you could look at that and say that that was ridiculous. But like I said, man, my radar was going off that that guy was full of crap. He had a pocket pair. I'll give him that. But really to raise to to thirty dollars, you know, from eight dollars, it just makes absolutely no sense. It, it really doesn't, guys. Anyways, um, continue sticking around though because we do have a little bit of up and down going forward in this session. But still, there's going to be some really good bluffs I'm going to be putting in here. Um, we're still going to go up, you know, over five hundred dollars. So we still got some more situations I want to talk about. And um, yeah, I mean, tap the like. I mean, just tap that like for that for that win right there. Just me kind of like booking that win um, and really just going with my instincts, man, because you got to do that sometimes. <laughs> All right, anyways, I put in a raise here. I don't think anybody called us. Nope, folded. Now, at this point, you know, when you get like a double up playing online poker, you could obviously quit for the day if you want, or you could take like a little bit of a break because, you know, the reality is you're going to go up and down a little bit. It's not like it's a straight trajectory. It's not like you're just going to get a triple up right away. You know, you're going to go down a little bit. You're going to go back up a little bit. It's just the flow and the nature of playing this game. And, you know, we are going to unfortunately go down a little bit of money but then we're going to come back up uh i made a call here this was not really a good flop for what we had but i decided to make you know a call to uh see a turn card you know thinking that maybe we could hit a you know jack or an eight on the turn we didn't this guy continued putting aggression in and that's when i was kind of like all right it doesn't make sense to bluff here i'm just going to give this hand up you know i don't think a bluff makes sense to be honest so that's why i gave it up didn't really think about it. And plus, I didn't think I could get him to fold either if I put in a bluff there. You know, sometimes, guys, when, you, when, you, when your story doesn't make sense or you think you can't get somebody off of a hand, it's just better to fold and take the loss instead of, like, losing a bunch of money trying to tell a story that doesn't make sense. You know, people aren't stupid, you know, for the most part. I mean, some players are, but, yeah, you know, the majority of people, if you're going to tell a story when you're playing a hand, then you got to kind of just stick with it. And, you know, with that one, it would it just, yeah, it was just better to fold it, especially with the aggression on the turn. Now, this was just a bad call. I should have just folded this hand. I just called it, I guess, for whatever reason. And I, you know, and what am I going to do here? Really not a whole lot I can do with these cards. It's just kind of a a fold so i kind of just wasted some money right there we would hit a seven on the turn hard to know if it would have been good but right, here we go with pocket sevens now i did a little limp little limp right here because like i said when you're first or second to act sometimes it is okay to limp with you know those suited connectors small pocket pairs this is small ish it's not like whatever um but we are gonna have a raise i'm gonna make a call with it and we are going to Take it to the flop with pocket sevens. And what's interesting is this guy raised seven dollars, and I figured because he raised seven, maybe we'll hit a seven when we call with sevens. Okay, we did not. Uh, not a terrible flop though, because you know, um, if he's got a couple over cards, you know, he's. Uh, I mean, he's probably going to put a continuation bet no matter what. So we're calling. 
looking for a low card. We didn't get it. Really don't like to see the jack, but he checked, so we'll take a check. River card was another bad one, so a lot of hands got there. Really, any ace, X, king, queen. Um, we ended up checking it over, which I think was the right play. I don't know if he would have called us. I, I would have had to have put in a pretty big bet, um, and maybe he folds. I don't know, but I think checking right there is probably pretty pretty standard just based on um he could call us with a lot of second pairs if he had a pair of jacks it's possible too so whatever now this was a, a spicy one for you guys now we got the big five do suited of hearts in the big blind you gotta love it gonna make a call here why not We've already got some money invested in the hand, which is, you know, why when you have hands that are like not very strong, but they're suited like this and you're in the big blind, you know, you might as well make a call. You know, anything's possible. Anyways, we did pair the deuce. Uh, we have runner runner cards for flushes still, um, two pairs, three of a kinds, things like that. But I'm not going to fold here. He is going to put out a bet. I don't think it was a big one. Maybe like, yeah, like three bucks. Obviously, I'm going to make a call. All right, turn card was a 10. Not a good card for us. Um, but but I had, some, I had some thoughts on this one. So he is going to put in a bet here. He bet pretty fast, $12. So what I did, which is what I don't think he was expecting is I went for a raise. So I kicked this up to like $36, really applying pr the pressure. A couple things I could represent here. Two pairs, eight, nine, flush draw. Those are the hands that I am basically trying to represent. Um, to me, he's got a pair of jacks here, maybe a pair of tens. Um, that's all I could see, right? So I'm thinking he's got a pair of jacks, maybe a pair of tens. Uh, I'm hoping he folds here just so I could take down the hand. Um, but he is going to make a call. And the fact that he took so much time to make this call told me a couple things. His hand wasn't that strong. If it was really strong, he would have re-raised me right here. But that's not the case. He is just going to flat call us. And um, the river card actually was a good one for us because now if I was representing that I'm on a flush draw, I'm good here basically. If I've got eight, nine, he's dead. I mean, can he make that call? Probably not with a pair of jacks or 10. So that's why I made that play because um, he hesitated so long. I just felt like he wasn't very strong and that river card really probably put him in a pickle and he just folded it right away. So Yes, um, definitely a lot of thinking going into that one. But I just noticed that like, if he was really strong, guys, he would have re-raised me and not just called my raise, okay? That's all I'm saying. Okay, now we've got pocket sixes, another small pocket pair. Um, put in a raise, though. And we are going to get three bet, but, you know, there's no way I'm going to fold sixes. So we are going to – we're going to make a call with it. But, yeah, the problem with raising with, you know, small pocket pairs like this is getting three bet. And then you're, you know, dealing with situations where you're investing – a decent chunk of money into a hand and it's like you have a small pocket pair that's why when you're like first or second to act limping is okay in my opinion it also depends on the table if everybody's being like super aggressive or not okay anyways uh now what we wanted to see and honestly guys this is a check fold i i can't continue with it you know ace queen is good po if he's got like a pocket pair like jacks or tens we're way behind and uh we're not it just we're not being a whole lot especially in the three bet so i just folded it now we will get to see a turn card though to see if this was a good fold were we going to get it on the turn and no we weren't it would have been a seven so i was definitely happy with that fold all right pocket aces and i hope you guys are still with me because it is still going to get good here we are still gonna go up some money and make some good plays now uh Pocket aces, you know, what you want to see here is getting three bet. You're just like praying somebody three bets or maybe four bets you, you know, that's what you're hoping for. All 
All right, player two made the call. Now player three is going to um, three bet us to like, I want to say $18. So, you know, coming back around to me, I'm really thinking I want to just squeeze a little bit more out of this guy. So I kicked it up another 20 bucks. So in total, $38 I felt like was the right amount. If he's got a good hand, it's going to be hard for him to fold. That's kind of what I figured, right? So if he's got like, you know, um, ace king, ace queen suited, uh, you know, um, maybe like a mid pocket pair. I mean, I'm hoping he's got like pocket kings or pocket, or ace king and he just comes over the top. That's what I'm hoping for. But he's just going to make a call here. And I was very sneaky about this. So the king is on the board. I decided to check and I checked quick making it look like I was afraid of the king, which I'm not, you know. Uh, he's going to check, and, you know, now I had to put in a bet, right? So I'm hoping he's got a pocket pair or a pair of kings here. That's really what I'm hoping for, putting this bet out there. But I think the check on the flop was just so sneaky because I did it so quick. Like, I'm, I'm afraid of that king. Unfortunately for us, he probably didn't have a whole lot there. So, you know, he folded and uh, that's really all we were going to get out of that hand, guys. Sadly, you know what I'm saying? You know, you do what you can with pocket aces. You know, at least I squeezed that extra 20 bucks out of him, you know. But that's all she wrote with that hand. All right, here we got the queen jack. And uh, like I said, I hope you guys are still with me because um, I got a big bluff coming up here. A big bluff. You don't want to miss. All right, I just called here um, looking for like a 10 or a jack or a queen. We hit the queen, um, and I got a little sneaky here. I checked it. River was a 7. He's going to put in a small bet, maybe like 5 bucks or something. Not even. I, uh, I raised this, you know, hoping that he'd think I'm bluffing here and would just make a call. I mean, we're really not losing a whole lot here. I figured he might just call if he's got a pair of nines or sevens. He called, squeeze a little bit out of that guy, and uh, I like that one a lot. All right, so, you know, even though doing good in this session, you know, up a couple hundred or whatever, really the hand that I loved the most was this one right here. And ace-king, honestly, guys, it can be tricky. You know, you could lose a lot of money with it, especially when it's not suited. I say that all the time because it's true. But, you know, I just, uh, if there was one play out of this entire session that I made, this was probably my favorite. You know, that's all I'm saying. All right, so we three bet. He called 977. So pretty bad board likely for both of us, you know. He could have a pair, maybe, unlikely. And let's say he did. Let, let's say, for instance, he has pocket nines. You know, he's probably just going to check here and not bet because, honestly, betting would be foolish. He bet pretty big. Turn card was a six. The fact that he was leading out on a board like this, to me, it just made absolutely no sense because if he's got a pocket pair like nines or something, you know, he isn't going to be taking this line. And he's going to bet like $57. This looks like a bluff all the way, all the way, guys. I'm not buying it. But I had to let the, the time kind of run down on this so I could at least think about it a little bit, which is exactly what I did. And I think some of this, this play might shock some of you, but for others, maybe you're thinking what I'm thinking here. I'm just not buying it. I'm not buying it at all. If he had a pocket pair too, like aces, kings, queens, something like that, it's almost as if you think he'd be scared of this board. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So I'm just not believing any of this for a second. And instead of folding or calling, I'm actually going to raise this guy all in. So basically I'm risking my whole stack on this one play. And what does he do? All 
All right, we get him to fold, and we basically dominate him. Okay, guys, um, just to wrap things up, I really hope you enjoyed all the hands here. Uh, nine would have been on the board, so the, the nine hit on the river there. Um, but yeah, uh, Ignition, like I said, it's one of the main sites I've been using now for a very long time. It's great, um, and of course, you guys could also get on our newsletter. We send out one email a week on all that. If you made it to the end, man, um, you know, and you're not subscribed, please do that, and we'll see you guys in the next poker video.